You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a newer face for Greater Brockton. I have our new library director. Paul, wow, welcome. Well, thank you, Mark. N Good to be here. Nice to see you. Well, we've had you on TV already because you spoke to the Rotary Club of Brockton. That's right. We do great events at the library. We just did the Soaring Without Limits, the Healing for the Arts. Yep. You made a cameo in there. We're going to have to probably charge you <laughs> pay royalties soon. But... Um, you are working very hard as the new director to remind everybody in the community that we are a community center. We're not just books. That's correct. Okay. And full disclaimer, I'm chairman of the library board, if you didn't already know that. I love the library. The library, people knew me for the library when I was 15 before I ever was the cable guy. <laughs> well, that's okay. funny because... I think everybody in Brockton has worked in that library at one point or another. <laughs> they sure have. Well, back in the day, there used to be, uh, you know, lots of summer job mm -hmm. opportunities. When the budgets in the city coffers were flush with cash, yep. you had parks and recreation. I was never an athlete. I was a book person. Mm -hmm. So I ended up in the library. My favorite job that I think <laughs> I ever had on the planet, other than answering the buzzer for the call for the books. I cut the wires when we built the new library. Oh, nice. uh, Tom Pluff and I got to cut the wires. That was a <laughs> pleasure. But now it's open. It's right. all open. It's mm -hmm. open stacks. It used to be closed stacks. Right. There's an open atrium. There's a bookstore. There's a reference room. There's a historical room. There's some, the there's children's an room. Gallery. An art gallery. The Driscoll Art Gallery, as a matter of That's fact. Right. And I knew Mr. Driscoll because <laughs> I worked there when he was there. Great man. So what's, what's new and different? What's coming up? Uh, this month at the library? Well, we're halfway through April, surprisingly, and uh, this weekend we have two events coming up. We have the opening of the Makerspace uh, on, it's at noon on the 15th. Mm -hmm. And what, that, what the Makerspace is, it's a space where uh, kids, basically from ages 7 or 8 up to about 17 or so, can go in and, 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 and explore different technologies. Uh, we, we're going to have wood making, wood cutting stuff. We're going to have uh, uh, soldering and circuit creation, and, and we're going to do that with paper circuits as well. And there'll be other things. 3D printing might be coming along soon. We'll have mm -hmm. 3D pens in there. It's just a place to go and be creative. And so we're really looking forward to that being a new and fresh and vital space in the library. Okay. And after that, directly after that, at 1 o'clock, is Richard Hand's uh, National Coin Week event. Now, he gives you cash. <laughs> he gives you coins and cash. I'm serious. That's right. Come down he to the library. Has, he always has samples. He's given them out. And he's been doing that for a, a lot of years. It's a... Numisma numismatic? Did I say it right? I don't know. I, I actually never it's written down it. here, and I, 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 okay. I kind of okay. went away from the word because I didn't but know. But that's the Saturday, the fifteenth, as well, and the whole month of April, like you said, we're halfway mm -hmm. through. But um, I was able to attend and be part of yeah. the Soaring Without Limits Healing for the Arts Poets. There were this photograph, this mm -hmm. art. It's up in the Driscoll Gallery yes. right now, and it is fabulous. It really is. I mean, I was incredibly moved. That was the this is the second year they've done it, and. Um, very much like the uh, the high school art exhibit that was up, uh, I was touched when I walked in there immediately. I got a chance to go in the day before after it was set up and, and have some alone time with that exhibit. And uh, boy, it was moving. I, I, I had to put my glasses down and just to take in the art and I figured the poetry I'll get later. Uh, and I think that uh, Philip did a great job, Philip Thesaurus, getting 30 poets together from around the area to contribute their, their artwork to these uh, these creations that were made by people who aren't artists. So that's there all the way through the yes. end of April. Yeah, that's there to the, the end of the April. 30th. Um, and that was done in conjunction with the Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts. Right. I had them on, on as a guest to promote the event before it happened. Um, there's all sorts of things always going on at the library. Yeah, there okay. really is. Um, get rid of a few misconceptions. Some people think libraries are passe, outdated, why do people go to libraries in 2017? They go there because there, there is a sense of community, and, and we do have events, and the events are broad. We're talking about the arts today, but we also have tax preparation help, which ran through uh, this week, and, and that's over. But uh, we, we offer a lot of services for the community that fall into those categories. We have meetings by um, uh, our state representatives, uh, who, who talk about uh, change and discrimination, and we have we, so we have conversations that are relevant to the community. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, there's 
a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week library in our electronic collections. We have uh, electronic books. We have uh, videos. We have music that you can download. Magazines. And Magazines as okay. well. And passes. And museum passes. That's right. So the Library Foundation, who's our partner, mm -hmm. uh, we have a board of trustees and we have a library foundation. And the foundation is the 501c3 nonprofit. Besides the city budget, they bring in resources when people pass away sometimes. They mm -hmm. might leave a bequest. They've helped us renovate the East Branch Library. We know we're yep. going to work on the West Branch Library. You're working on historical preservation grants so we can get the place repointed yep. and, and done. But the library has undergone a, a metamorphosis over the years. One of the basic things, obviously, is people come there. Schools close at a certain time that's of right, day. That's right. Where do the kids go? Mm -hmm. They come to the library. That's right. On vacation weeks, uh, mm -hmm. we see a lot of ki uh, younger kids with their parents, with their moms coming in. To the, to the children's library. The East and West Branch get a lot of activity with regard to children and their, and their moms and their dads. Now, um, give us some basics. Website, phone number, <laughs> hours. Uh, and I know the hours are a little, the branches are only open because of budget constraints, 12 hours a week right. each. The main library, there's, there's a library open in Brockton Monday through Saturday, it's right. just sometimes just in a different place. Yeah, you can check the website at www.brocktonpubliclibrary.org. Uh, that will give you the which, out, which libraries are open when. It, it runs down this uh, Monday and Tuesday night. The branches are or Monday and Tuesday. The branches are open in the morning, east or west. I don't know which one. And then the main library opens at noon and stays open till eight. Correct. And then on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. The main library is open from 9 to 5, and the branches cover the evenings. Right. And then Friday, we're open 9 to 5. Saturday, we're open 9 to 5. Right. And uh, we're working on that, and it all depends on <laughs> what happens with the municipal pie this year with the budget process, and the state budget process right. affects the local process because we get state aid. That's right. So that helps us with materials. We, we have a circulating col collection. Brockton is part of the Old Colony Library Network. Mm -hmm. So you're not just limited to the books and no. materials that are in the Brockton Public Library, any of the ones that are in the network. Yeah, and beyond well. the network, too, if we need to go outside. Right. And we also have a delivery system for, for uh, any of our, of our residents that can't get to a library physically. We will deliver the materials to you at your home. Project Outreach. Project Outreach. The only thing we don't have that we used to have back in the day it's was bookmobile. bookmobile. <laughs> but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll come up with a solution for that, too. Um, the other thing is the kids do come to the library. There are a lot of kids. Brockton is not a wealthy community, so there are computers there and technology at That's the right. library that kids can access after school. There's a time limit on it. Yep. And we also have uh, English classes yes. as well. Yeah, Melissa's ESOL classes. Uh, I've been working on a grant for her all, all, almost all day today <laughs> to, to get some money for, for more ESL programming. And they do it well. And, and um, I do know the schools are going to deal with some cuts this year. An adult learning center could be part of that. Ooh. So we might be even as more important than mm -hmm. we already are. So I got the one-minute cue. I'll give you 30 seconds of it. Anything you want to say to the viewers about Brockton Public Library? Well, um, I've been here about three and a half months maybe, and I'm, I'm just really enjoying myself here at Brockton. Uh, I invite you down to the library. Um, come down and say hello to me. I'm usually at the main branch, but you can find me at the east and west. And um, remember that it's your library. It's, it's your place. Uh, you support us, and we'll support you in return. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.